You really got to be kidding me right now. Tyreek Nasheed, Marcus Sanders, whoever you are, whoever you choose to be at any given moment when you decide to beg for money, you got some nerve trying to have yourself look as if you are oppressed, as if you are going through hard times, as if you are going through a major struggle. The white supremacists, they have their foot on your neck and you need your brothers and sisters to rescue you. And you are just like any of the rest of us that are really going through this. So you want to be one of us. But Tariq Nasheed, you're not one of us. You're not one of us. You are not a part of us. Now, we have to accept you as being a part of this race, a part of this black society, because, you know, it's nothing that we can do about that. But as far as you trying to compare yourself as the same as the rest of us, that's a big old lie, Tariq Nasheed. And your reasoning for this is, look what happened to me recently. See, they just come in my house anytime they get ready and they try to assassinate me. Let me break down assassination attempts versus someone just fucking calling in a fucking prank. And let me start by saying this. This man, I know for 100% guaranteed now through his own words, that this man had something to do with this. See, he wants you to feel sorry for him. He wants to gain your sympathy. And the only way that he could ever gain your sympathy is to pull a stunt like this, ladies and gentlemen, because he is not willing to give anybody any money. Then he'll lie and say, oh, I've, I've bailed out a lot of activists and, and, you know, with my own money, your own money, the money that you get from the people. How is that your own money, nigga? How's that your own money, man? Explain that to me. Break that down to me and everybody else that's listening. How is this your own money, nigga? This is not your own money. The money that you have in your bank account, the money that you have in your pocket, the money that you give your loved ones, your wife and your kids and your mom and your oldest daughter and everybody else that depends on you. It comes from the motherfucking people, nigga. It comes from the people. Now, I want to hear you lie your way out of this one. Well, see, I mean, no, no, see, that money is separate. I, I don't touch that money, see. Can you dig? You dig? See, I don't touch that money. That money is set aside. That money is for the struggle. My money, I'm talking about, you know, uh, property that I own. I mean, I'm talking about, you know, things I got going on that you coons out there don't even know about. So don't have my name in your mouth. You don't know me. You don't know what I do every day. But we do know. We do know. You know why and how we know? Because there's nothing that you have did that warrants any discussion. You have did nothing, Tariq Nasheed. You have did nothing. And trust me, if you had did something, especially one of the things that you lied about. You are a bragger. You would have let everyone know a long time ago. And don't say that you're not a bragger. This is a part of your characteristics. This is a part of what makes you up. You want to impress the people, but most of all, you want to gain their sympathy. And this was a big old stunt that was created by you. It was created by you. I'm for sure now. I'm guaranteed on this now. At first, I was up in the air about it. I thought, well, maybe it, it was one of your enemies that just wanted to get one up on you. They wanted some type of revenge. But let me tell you something, man. Listen, this benefited you more than it damaged you. Let me say it again so everybody can hear what I just said. And I hope that you're listening and really paying attention to this. 
this benefited Tyreek Nasheed more than it damaged him. So then if it benefited him more then you know, this was set in his corner. It was constructed and created just for him to benefit him. I'm for sure that this man has something to do with this. He didn't make the call himself, but he paid somebody to do it. Just like you pay several people several times a year to call in and act as if they are white supremacists. Unknown white supremacists that don't like you, that's willing to call into your show and have a decent conversation and not call you nigga not one time and not even curse not one time. These white supremacists are the most polite people that I've ever heard in my whole life. The reputation of a white supremacist, they would start the conversation calling nigga. But these certain people, they respected you enough not to call nigga out, not to even raise their voice to you. Who in the fuck are you trying to fool, Tyreek Nasheed? Or should I say Marcus Sanders? I mean, you have so many identities. Who are you going to be next? Who are you going to construct and create next for the people? It's all about money for you, man. Every show now, you want people to give you money. But listen, you talk so much shit about Tommy Sotomayor. Now listen, in no way do, do I condone Tommy Sotomayor. And I'm not trying to take up for him. I'm just trying to make a point. He talks so much shit about Tommy Sotomayor. Listen, he doing the same motherfucking thing. He doing the same thing that Tommy has did for years. So what separates you from Tommy Sotomayor? What separates you from Umar Johnson? What separates you from any other fucking crook that's already found out? What separates you from all the rest of the fucking criminals? Nothing, because you are a part of them. You are the criminals that we speak of. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time to wake up and smell the coffee. Recently, this man put up a video about Trump and about his latest antics. Now, I agree. These antics, these publicity stunts was just that. I mean, anybody could have figured this out. But did you hear how he tried to, again, involve himself? Well, see, you know, you can't let this lie come into your life and take over because it's just a publicity stunt. It's just a PR move for Trump. And, and, and see, they came to my house and they took over. Listen, nigga, we know that this happened, okay? Shut it down. Why do you want to continue talking about this? See, you're gaining momentum. You're gaining momentum. Since this incident happened, guess what? I want everybody to listen to this. I know I'm getting hyped. I, I really need to calm down so that you can really understand me, fully understand me. <laughs> I realize that my words are stumbling. I need to take my time so that you can really understand me. But you know that I get hyped. You know I get excited about these things, especially when I catch people like Marcus Sanders in lies. I mean, blatant lies that somehow you can't make the connection to. Ladies and gentlemen, this man had the nerve he had the nerve to bring up money at a time that he should be talking nothing but safety. I want you, listen, I've already talked about this, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to talk about it again. At a time that he should have been talking about safety. You understand? Man, let me pull my shirt off. I'm, 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 I'm getting a little hot in here. Ladies and gentlemen, I want you to understand what I just said. This motherfucker has got some nerve mentioning money at a time like this. Listen, if this were really true, you could have died. And not only you, but your fucking family. And all you can think of is 
hey, you know, uh, if y'all give me some money, I think this will piss off the white supremacists. You know, the more money you give me, the angrier they will become. He said that these were his exact words. He said, the more money that you give to him, the angrier that these white supremacists will become. And he wants to make them as angry as possible. So therefore, he needs as much money as possible. <laughs> and you fell for it. You stupid motherfuckers giving him a hundred dollars at a time. Do you realize that he's using this money on himself and nobody else? Just because he lies to you and say, hey, listen, you know, I've done so much. I've done a lot of things that people don't even know that I've done. Uh, uh, I've bailed out activists. Who have you bailed out then? Since you bring it up, who in the hell did you bail out? See, you didn't call a name because you know that we can check on it, nigga. And you know when we check on it, we'll catch the lie. But the lie is already caught, nigga. You ain't bailed out nobody. You are a liar and a cheat and a deceiver. That's what you are. And you're trying to capitalize on something that you created in the first place. You got that British accent motherfucker to call. You already knew who it was. Bet you everything I got in my bank account. He already knew who in the hell it was that made that phone call. Because he set it up. And all of a sudden now he's benefiting off of it. Everybody is, is giving him so much sympathy. Oh, Tyreek, I'm glad you're okay. I'm glad you didn't get blown up by that bomb. What bomb? It was a bomb threat, not an actual fucking bomb. Let's break that down for a while. For this story to have been true, I want you to understand something. These people... The supposed bomb creators that would have set up the bomb inside his house or near his house, they would have had to come onto the fucking property. And I'm pretty sure that you can't just walk on this man's fucking property. I mean, just, you know, anytime you fucking feel like it, you just walk on this man's property without anybody seeing you, without himself and his family seeing you. Now you see what I'm talking about? You see how absurd this shit is? He got somebody to call this in and he was ready for the police to come. And I'm going to prove it in the next 10 seconds with what I say next. This is why the news found out about it because he made the phone call to the news. Now I know that for a fucking fact that he called the fucking news. I know that for a fact. And you can look it up. You can even call the fucking news station that came out there and ask them that question. And they will gladly tell you. But he don't think that any of you is smart enough to have already did that. And I agree with him. Because you just trust this man no matter what he says, no matter what he does. He don't have to prove shit to you. You just believe everything that comes out of this man's mouth. Recently... He was talking about people comparing him to Trump and uh, also comparing him to Kim Kardashian and saying that both Kim Kardashian and uh, Donald Trump has did more in a couple of days than Tyreek Nasheed has ever did in his whole fucking life. I have to agree with that. You can call me a coon if you want to. Now, understand. I know exactly what Kim Kardashian is doing. I know exactly what Donald Trump is doing. But it's no different from what Tyreek Nasheed has done himself for 20 years. Huh? It's no fucking different. Everything that they do, and I'm talking about all of them together, everything that they do is for a reason. It's to capitalize off of, whether it's money or it's power or both. But for Tyreek Nasheed, it's surely money. Because everything that he connects himself to, 
He himself is the only one that benefits off of it. Did you hear what I said? He is the only one that benefits off this bullshit. Not you, not me, not anybody else that look like you and me, but himself and his fucking family and nobody else. Now you tell me, why do we need him? Now you tell me, why should you give your money to him? How is that helping anybody else besides him? What is he giving you? Information? Same information that you can get from the same sources that he goes to every day, social media, the internet, and any other place that you can think of that you already been to. Get the fuck out of here, man. Listen, let me tell you, he has bamboozled you with this one. He created this shit himself because he was realizing I'm falling off. People don't fucking care anymore. I got to make a move. And this was the move. This was the move, ladies and gentlemen. Are you getting it now? Can you dig? Can you dig it? You let this motherfucker con you yet again. Every year, every year this motherfucker is conning you with something. If it's not a lecture, it's a documentary. If it's not a documentary, he's raising money for some poor kids that don't have book bags. If it's not that, then it's something else. If it's not that, then he's trying to pull stunts to gain sympathy. Oh, the white supremacists, they attacking me. They say they're going to kill me. Oh, Lord, I don't feel safe. Oh, y'all pray for me. I got to get the spirit of old gun. And the only way I can get the spirit of old gun is if you give me $1,000. I mean, I know how I sound, but see, you know, I, see, 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 I need that money. How does this motherfucker sound? He tried to separate himself from Tommy Sotomayor, but he's acting just like Tommy Sotomayor. He's acting just like Umar Johnson. He's acting just like Brother Polite or anybody else that begs for money. They want you to feel like that you all need them. And you don't need them. Your life would actually be better without Marcus Sanders. And all of his different fake identities. Fake names. Fake birthdays. This man don't even know how old he is. Because he has lied about it so much to you that he forgot his real true age. This motherfucker is 51 years old. 51 years old. His wife is less than half his age. Damn. And the only reason why he married her, because he knew that she would listen to everything that he said. She was so impressed by him that she don't even ask this motherfucker questions. And I'm pretty sure that she has been alarmed by so many things thus far since they've been married. But she was told to shut up and never mention it again. Don't even mention it. You don't think this motherfucker will put his hands on a woman? Didn't I already prove this years ago? Didn't I talk to uh, one of his ex-girlfriends that he wanted to put out on the block because he wanted to be a fucking pimp? See, that story was true. That's why he didn't deny it. That's why he didn't create a video and say, you know what, keyboard musician is lying, and I don't know what in the fuck this motherfucker is talking about. I don't even know that girl. He didn't deny it. Isn't that ironic? Something to that degree? I mean, I interviewed the lady. I let her talk for more than an hour. And she told her whole story. And this motherfucker didn't say nothing. Because you know why? Because he was afraid that we had even more evidence waiting. If he decided to say it was a lie. And he couldn't risk that. He couldn't risk losing everything because, trust me, he would have lost everything. So he remained quiet. Ironically, a lot of these motherfuckers are remaining quiet about me. You know why? Because they realize that coming up against me <sighs> is a bad idea. I know my shit. I'm not some motherfucker and average Joe. That's just deciding to create a video or two about different people on YouTube and beyond YouTube. I do research, okay? Sometimes months in advance. I know a lot of information about these people. More information than I've already given you. 
That should tell you something. That should tell you a lot, ladies and gentlemen. 